Yes, we are. Fantastic. Good morning, everybody. What a great turnout we have for this chit chat this morning, becoming an Inflation Reduction Act ambassador. First and foremost, thanks for considering becoming an Inflation Reduction Act ambassador. I am battling a bit of a cold this morning, so I've got my bag of cough drops. I've got my my handy dandy beverage next to me. So hopefully I won't be hacking too much over the next hour. Um, but I do have a bit of a frog in my throat and uh, we'll power through. So um, thanks again for being here. Uh, Inflation Act, uh, Inflation Reduction Act Ambassador. Ambassador, that's a big word. Let's think about that for a second. Here's some famous ambassadors. Of course, we have a brand ambassadors like Tiger Woods and Nike. He's got a hundred million dollar deal with Nike. Shirley Temple, you may or may not know, in 1989 became the very first U.S. ambassador to Czechoslovakia. Angelina Jolie. United Nations Goodwill Ambassador for Refugees. And so, you know, I was just thinking there's just a ton of similarities between these ambassadors and being an IRA ambassador. I mean, these folks, they travel the world, see all sorts of different things. IRA ambassador, you get to travel, you know, Lake County, Anoka County, you know, Stearns County. Uh, Tiger Woods, he gets a uh, hundred million dollars, um, and as an IRA ambassador, you will receive our heartfelt gratitude. You know, it's kind of the same. Really, really, a lot of similarities. <laughs> Lots of similarities there. Okay, IRA ambassador. Well, what in the world does that even mean in the first place? First of all. Here at the good old clean energy resource teams, we have received a ton of requests to spread the word about the IRA, which is fantastic. And we have given lots of presentations uh, over the last few months uh, all across the state. Um, but we in no way, shape or form can reach everybody everywhere. And uh, so we need your help. We need your help in getting the word out. And we thought, gosh, if we created this toolkit and this ambassador program, then we can get the tools in folks' hands so that you can get the word out to folks in your community. And so what we've done is uh, created um, uh, recorded presentations, both longer. Uh, recorded presentations, as well as really short, maybe two minute to five minute, six minute um, uh, recorded presentations that that uh, ambassadors can use. Uh, we have scripts uh, on the various different items of the IRA, handouts, slide decks that you can modify. Uh, for your purposes, uh, and um, and when you sign uh, up to access the toolkit, then you'll also have an option to receive email updates. So, the IRA passed in August 2022, um, but there are uh, uh, guidance uh, being issued regularly or updates <clears throat> to the IRA being issued regularly. So you'll be the first to know. Uh, about all of these various things th through uh, our email updates. And one thing I'll, I'll note is uh, please let us know if you use these resources. It's really important for us to keep track of uh, if you do a, a presentation to your a local community group or um, use the handouts uh, uh, at a tabling event. Whatever it might be, uh, we would really appreciate it if you 
let us know and let us know how we can improve it, of course, as well. It's pretty easy to find. Um, of course, uh, as a follow up to this presentation, we'll send direct links uh, to where you can sign up to be an IRA ambassador. But if you go to the CERTS homepage, uh, the first thing that you'll see is a link to our Inflation Reduction Act guidance. And on that page, then you'll see this uh, button on the lower left there, Inflation Reduction Act Ambassador Toolkit. And you can click on that and you're off and running. And I'll circle back to this slide at the end of the presentation, um, just as a, a reminder to folks. With that, these are the, the topics that I'm going to cover in the next 45 minutes or so, 50 minutes. I'm going to give a, a broad overview of what the IRA is all about and then dive into some of the residential aspects, uh, energy efficiency aspects, EVs, uh, businesses and nonprofit efficiency and renewable benefits, as well as this brand new thing called direct pay, or sometimes called elective pay, and uh, talk for a minute about what this new thing is all about. It's very exciting. Before I launch into that, uh, I suspect many of you are familiar with CERTs or the Clean Energy Resource Teams, but just a friendly reminder that this is our 20th year, two decades we've, we've been around. We're out of our teenage years, and we're, <laughs> we're, we're young adults now. Uh, um, and we, uh, all, throughout all these years, we've really had the straightforward mission to help communities do clean energy projects. Uh, we're really project focused. And, and, um, and so we have uh, four partners. We're a partnership organization. Southwest Regional Development Commission, uh, the um, Great Plains Institute, a nonprofit here in the Twin Cities. Uh, and then, of course, the state of Minnesota is a partner of ours. We work hand in hand with the Department of Commerce. And then our fourth and final partner is the University of Minnesota, uh, particularly the U of M Extension. That's certs. All right, let's dive into the, the topic du jour, the Inflation Reduction Act. And I'll say, you know, it's, it's uh, gosh, it's now going on almost a year since it was passed. Um, but there, and there's been a ton of guidance issued uh, since it was passed in August 2022. But there's still uh, some things that we, we don't quite know yet. Um, and it's a humongous bill, you know, 700 pages uh, dealing with a wide variety of things. And, and so there may be things that I don't know. There may be things that we collectively don't know quite yet. At the heart of the Inflation Reduction Act is a $369 billion package of investments. This is the most significant legislation in history, and it's not even close to advance the, the clean energy transition. $110 billion of that will be in grants. And these are um, both formula grants to states and cities, as well as uh, competitive grants. But really, the engine of the IRA is tax credits two dozen different tax provisions with the aim of accelerating the deployment of clean energy, clean vehicles, clean buildings, clean manufacturing. And call me biased, but you know, I think those grants and uh, tax credits should come to Minnesota. I know that's a real controversial statement to say to this group, I'm sure. Uh, but that's in part why we, again, why we want this ambassador program is just to get the word out to as many people as possible uh, about these different incentives. Many of the, the tax provisions offer bonus credits 
to projects that are located in low income communities or what are called energy communities uh, that pay prevailing wages and use apprenticeships or meet certain domestic content provisions. Get this, the American Clean Energy Association projects that the IRA itself will result in, in the deployment of 550 gigawatts, gigawatts of clean energy generation in the next decade. That's 550 gigawatts uh, that'll come from solar, wind, geothermal, combined heat and power, fuel cells, and, and more. Let's dive in on some of these uh, residential focused opportunities and talk about tax credits or homeowners. So who is eligible? Anybody, anybody with a tax appetite. Uh, uh, there has been a, a tax credit incentive for energy efficiency on the books for quite a while, but it was capped at $500. And it was capped at $500 for your lifetime. Now, thanks to the IRA, the tax credit is up to 30%. And, uh, and the cap, it, there's still a cap, but it's $3,200. And it changed from once in an eternity to an annual cap, $3,200 annual cap. By the way, I should note, if you have any questions uh, throughout this presentation, please put them in the chat and we'll, we'll uh, take a crack at them um, as they come up. Uh, this breaks down to a total limit of $1,200 or any combination of any uh, home envelope improvements. So think windows, doors, skylights, that sort of thing, insulation, electrical work. Um, any combination of heat pumps or heat pump water heaters and biomass stoves, lots of biomass stoves in Minnesota. That's subject to a, a $2,000 annual cap. So talking about air source heat pumps, just as an example, I think this is the decade of the air source heat pump. I really do. You, you folks likely know of what they're all about, um, transferring heat instead of creating it, heating in the winter, cooling in the summer, 30%, 30% covered uh, of the project cost up to $2,000 for that tax credit. And really just backing up a second, I think the IRA itself is really about electrification. It's really about a drive towards electrification, a shift away from fossil fuels, how to get more efficient heating and, uh, uh, heating and cooling and, uh, and drive your home, your business towards electrification. Not all air source heat pumps are created equal. And it's important to check really for all, a lot of these different technologies. Um, it's in, important to check what qualifies. As a good rule of thumb, uh, all ducted heat pumps that have a Energy Star label, they're good to go. But always do your due diligence before you sign on the dotted line to uh, purchase that item to make sure that it qualifies. Residential rebate programs created through uh, the IRA. There's two big ones. Um, and these, this will be funding that comes from the feds to the state energy offices. State energy offices have to uh, put together detailed plans of how the rebates will be rolled out. The feds have to approve those plans. And then states have up to nine months to implement the plans. Uh, the IRA allocated 
about nine million, or excuse me, nine billion for two new residential energy efficiency programs. The home energy performance-based whole house rebate program, that's a bit of a mouthful. So they call it the homes rebate and the high efficiency electrical home rebate program, both created brand new by the IRA. For the homes rebate, uh, uh, everyone qualifies. However, there's a uh, uh, significant more money for low and me uh, medium income households. And uh, HERA, and the High Efficiency Electrical Home Rebate Program, is really designed for, for uh, LMI residents, low and medium income residents. A little bit more on the homes rebate. What's that all about? So, uh, I just talked to the person who's rolling this out for Minnesota the other day, and she said that uh, we can expect this to become a reality in 2024. Um, and uh, this is a whole house energy improvement, whole house energy improvement. So uh, number one, we always encourage folks to, to get an energy audit. Uh, on their home or on their business. And there's a, uh, an incentive uh, through the IRA to do that. Um, so you got that home energy audit, you know what to do. The, the rebates through the homes uh, program will be based on modeled and modeled or measured energy savings. So if it's modeled, that means you're working with a contractor who uses a modeling software that says if you do A, B, and C, you'll save 20% on, uh, on your energy bill. That's a $2,000 rebate. If you save 35% uh, energy savings, that's a $4,000 rebate. So that's the modeled approach. Or it could be measured. So you know what to do. You do the, you work with a contractor who measures your energy use beforehand, before the work is done, and then measures it after the work is done. And if there's a 20% energy savings, you get a couple grand rebate. If it's 35% or more, $4,000 rebate. And if, uh, and these rebates are doubled if you are a, a low and moderate income resident. So the state, I, I know state of Minnesota or states all across the nation are thinking hard about things like income verification and what software can be used um, and just other uh, various uh, quality assurance components. Here, uh, also starting next year is a little bit different. This is for homeowners and apartment dwellers. Um, again, coming through the state, this is a this is intended to be a point of sale rebate. So you go down to Home Depot, you purchase that that uh, heat pump, clothes dryer, you get the rebate when you walk out of the store, when you purchase the item. Um, so, so that's a benefit. Uh, this covers both the, um, the equipment and installation costs. These, what you're seeing on the screen here are the max amounts. Um, so this is up to $14,000 uh, is, the, is the grand total. Um, if your household income is is eighty percent uh, area median income, again, this program is specific for LMI. So if it's if your income is 80 percent of L LMI, of or excuse me, eighty percent of the area median income or, or less, hundred percent rebates, hundred percent. If it is between 80% up to 150% of the area median income, it's half of that, 
fifty percent uh, of uh, of the rebate. And if your income is over one hundred fifty percent, that's where the tax credits come in. So if you're if you got a house like mine and you've got a service panel that looks sort of like a a Rube Goldberg machine with wires coming in and out uh, all over the place. That's uh, four grand if you if you qualify um, with your income, four grand to make those improvements. Pretty nice. So here's just a summary of uh, of this of this program. Really, again, targeting LMI households. Um, you see those numbers again, 80% or less, 100% of the rebate, up to 150%, 50% rebate. And uh, and then and then if it's above that, of course, you can use the tax credits. And renters can, of course, tap into this too on on uh, items that may that they may purchase for their for their home. So uh, as I mentioned, these are still in the works um, to be rolled out in, uh, sometime next year, but we're really encouraging folks to begin planning now. Um, and I'll say that uh, there's a, a website called Rewire America that really has uh, uh, some nice electrification planning resources. Um, and a great guide on on how to uh, plan for these projects, and of course, get that home energy audit, and that's really the the first and foremost uh, thing that you can you can do today. Let's talk residential and solar. You know, there's been a, a tax credit for solar uh, for homeowners and business businesses for quite a while. Uh, it was last year, it was 26%. Um, it was on its way down to 22%. Eventually, it was going to uh, hit 10% until the IRA. Um, so now, uh, so now that uh, tax credit has been boosted back up to 30%. And uh, this qualifies for not only solar projects, but also standalone energy storage. It used to be that, uh, I'm, I'm talking batteries here. It used to be uh, that that battery had to be tied into a solar array. That's no longer the case. It can be a standalone energy storage uh, item and, and take advantage of uh, that tax credit. Talking about EVs, EV incentives are shifting. Uh, again, that there's been a tax credit for EV vehicles on the books for a while, a 7,500 tax credit. That, that uh, remains the same, 7,500 tax credit. What's changed is there's no longer a vehicle cap. It used to be if the manufacturer made over 200,000 vehicles, uh, that tax credit went away. So like Tesla, um, uh, but now those, so that went, that, uh, that 200,000 vehicles cap went away. And so those vehicles are eligible again. Uh, what's new is there's some income requirements and cost of the vehicle requirements. So the maximum income for a family household Three hundred thousand uh, dollars. A taxpayer filing single, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and then that uh, the cap on the cost for the vehicles themselves for a car, fifty five thousand, uh, and then for a, a van or an SUV, a pickup truck, that goes up to eighty thousand dollars. There's some helpful websites out there that show which vehicles qualify for these tax credits. 
One new addition, thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act, um, is that used EVs will now also be, also be eligible for a tax credit, a $4,000 tax credit or 30% of the sale price, whichever is lower. So that's exciting. So again, here's just a, a summary of, of uh, um, uh, some of those income uh, limits and, and some of the conditions of starting next year, 2024, at least 40% of the materials used for your new EV battery must come from the United States or one of our our trade allies. Um, in this, and this goes up uh, year after year, up to 20, 2029, it, it, uh, it goes up to 100%. 40% next year, 100% by the end of, this, of uh, the decade. Otherwise, um, you will not be able to take advantage of the tax credit. Um, in addition, if your EV battery uses materials from a country that the U.S. deems a state sponsor of terror or is blocked by the Treasury Department's Office of Foreign Assets Control, you also won't be eligible. And who's on that list? China. And China right now makes a whole heck of a lot of, of uh, EV batteries. So again, as you heard me say from the outset, this is um, the Inflation Reduction Act is a, a big market incentive for uh, creating these, these products um, in America or uh, with one of our trade allies. <laughs> Let's go through a case study. The Coleman family, lovely family. They live in northern Minnesota in Babbitt, 1,300 square foot, three bedroom home built in the mid 1960s. And uh, they have an annual income of 55,000. It's under 80% of the area median income for Babbitt, which is $93,000. So they, uh, through HERA, um, they qualify for an upfront discounts that can cover 100% of their electrification costs, up to 14 grand. Again, that's the, the cap. So what might this mean for the Coleman's? Um, this year, they want to ditch that old propane range and, and uh, buy a new range, uh, 100% covered just like my house they've got some old wiring that needs to be improved and uh 1500 bucks again 100 percent. all the way down to a few years from now they they want to ditch their gas car and buy a used nissan leaf and uh $14,000, they can get a $4,000 tax credit on the new, on the used EV. That's the Coleman's. This is the Garcia's. They kind of look like the Coleman's, don't they? And they are a lovely family of five down in Worthington, 1,600 square foot, four bedroom home built in the 19, early 1970s heated with natural gas, and their income is 115,000. It's just a shade under the uh, that 150% AMI or Worthington, which is um, 83,000, I believe. And so they qualify for 50%, 50% through the uh, IRA rebates, the HERA rebates. So this for this family this year they want to get a new a, a new used 
uh, electric vehicle, get rid of their gas car. Again, they get a $4,000 tax credit for that. Uh, they've got an old service panel that they want to make some changes to. Half of that covered uh, through HERA. Uh, all the way down to 2028, they're thinking about putting in a solar array on their home. And uh, they can get a 30% tax credit for that array. So the important thing here is just, just thinking ahead, planning. Um, what items do you have that are coming to the end of their useful life? Or for whatever reason, you wish to uh, make some improvements. And, and just thinking through about uh, what those rebates and incentives Maybe. All right, businesses and farms, some good good improvements here for the solar. Um, as I mentioned before, that tax credit was was on its way down, twenty six percent, then twenty two percent, heading south towards ten percent. Uh. That's been bumped up for, for at least the next decade to a minimum of 30%. And uh, so if that solar project is over a megawatt, the tax credit is only 6%, unless you use prevailing wage, which of course you should, and apprenticeship requirements, and then it is bumped up to the full 30% tax credit. For the longest time, these really all, all of the renewable energy uh, projects across the nation have been getting tax credits either through what's called the uh, uh, investment tax credit um, or a production tax credit, the PTC, the ITC or the PT PTC. Production tax credit is one that you get um, staggered over time, ITC, you kind of get it, get it uh, in that first year uh, after you do the project. And those are going away, both of them. Both of them are toast on January 1st, 2025. And they're being replaced by what's called the Clean Electricity Investment Credit. Uh, this is a technology neutral incentive. It applies to all generation facilities and energy storage systems that have a greenhouse gas emission rate of zero. So like solar or wind or geothermal or hydrogen fuel cells or combined heat and power, biogas and, and more. So that'll, that'll roll roll out uh, January 1st, 2025. Again, the, uh, the this new tax credit is, it'll be functionally similar to the, uh, the longstanding investment tax credit, but not technology specific. What also is, this is really exciting, I think, through the IRA is that these tax credits are now transferable, aka you can sell them. So Beforehand, if you didn't have a tax appetite and you had the tax tax credit in hand, you couldn't you couldn't use it, and they were non refundable. So if you didn't have it, if you didn't have a use for them, um, you just couldn't use them. Now you can sell them on the open market if you don't want to use them yourself. Uh, eligible uh, uh, entities can can put them out on the open market and sell them. And by the way, that income that you make from that sale is non-taxable. So that's a pretty sweet incentive for a business that doesn't want to use the tax credit th themselves or, or can't use the tax credit. So maybe you sell them for, maybe a business sells a tax credit for 90 cents on the, on the dollar, for example. That, that organization that buys it, they they can use the full $1 tax credit. They buy it for 90 cents. And then that delta is their savings. 
and the person that sells it has that 90 cents to, to invest in whatever they want to invest in. That's brand new. So I mentioned the, uh, the tax credit is 30% as a, at a minimum. It couldn't be much more than that, which is really exciting. Through the, the Inflation Reduction Act, they put in place what are called adders, uh, four different adders and uh, for commercial projects, um, or as, as I'll talk about in, in a minute for, um, for nonprofits as well non-taxpaying entities. So if uh, you're, if you are using, um, we'll say solar, if you're using solar modules, solar components that are made in America, domestic content, that 30% tax credit goes to 40%. That's a 10% adder. If you are located in an energy community. And that's defined as a community that has high fossil fuel employment um, uh, or uh, has uh, or like a recently shut down coal plant um, or, or the project is located on a brownfield site. That's an additional 10%. Two other adders, if the project is located in a uh, under five megawatts and is located uh, in a low income community, you may qualify for an additional 10% adder, or if it's uh, part of an affordable housing project or benefits low income residents, it could be an additional 20%. So, so the the takeaway here is these, these tax credits, they were on their way down to 10%. Now, if the stars all aligned, that tax credit could be as high as 70% in an ideal situation. I mean, it's a game changer, total, total game changer. <clears throat> Uh, storage, again, I, I mentioned that um, standalone storage qualifies for, for these tax credits as well, and, and they qualify for the, the adders as well. Um, by the way, I was, uh, um, and so I, I mentioned a lot of the uh, uh, production is shifting to Made in America. Um, over the July 4th holiday weekend, I was talking to mayor of a small town in Kansas, and they have a Panasonic $4 billion battery manufacturing plant moving close to their town, their, to their town of 5,000 people um, in Kansas. So that's, that's getting up and rolling. There's another $4 billion plant uh, created by Honda, Honda and LG in Ohio that's being um, built and more. So we're our, even though the IRA was just passed um, August of last year, we're, we are really seeing corporations um, make incentive uh, or investment decisions uh, right here in America. REAP, gosh, I used to love to talk about REAP, the Rural Energy for America program, because uh, REAP provides, provided up to a 25% a grant uh, for farmers or for, um, for businesses in, in rural America, uh, up to 25% competitive grant. That's changed, and it's changed for the better. Uh, that 25% grant now has gone up to 50%. And the feds dumped in a bunch more money, $2 billion total. Um, so it's still a competitive grant program. There's no guarantee that that farmers uh, that put a solar array on their land or a small business in rural America, rural Minnesota, uh, uh, will get this grant. But um it uh 
it's it's a very very healthy incentive that um that we have been getting the word out and we'll continue to get the word out by the way rural america is qualified as uh, population centers of 50,000 or less so much of minnesota qualifies another one that's really a game changer um, in the tax code, it's called 179D, not the most uh, wildly memorable name, 179D, but it's, it's the green building tax deduction, not a credit, not a rebate, it's a tax deduction. And it, again, like some of these other ones, it's, it's been on the books for a while, since 2006. And the whole idea here is to uh, provide an incentive to drive commercial building owners and designers of of uh, buildings to reduce their energy use by rewarding the implementation of energy efficient building components like the HVAC system or lighting or the building envelope, those sorts of things. Prior to the Inflation Reduction Act, the, the, the uh, commercial building owner could get a tax deduction of a buck 88. Dollar 88 per square foot if the renovation or the new building achieved a 50% energy savings. 50%. That's a that's a big a big bar, a high bar to reach. Or the new construction was 50% more energy efficient over a standard energy benchmark. The Inflation Reduction Act lowered the required energy savings from 50% to 25% and set a sliding scale for the amount of the, of the, de the deduction um, from 50%, or excuse me, 50 cents uh, uh, per square foot um, up to a dollar. That's, that's what they call the, the base deduction. Um, but if, but again, if you pay prevailing wages or use apprenticeships in your building renovation or your brand new building, here's the big deal: that tax deduction goes can go up to five dollars per square foot per square foot. And this used to be only for commercial entities. The IRA changed that. They said. Um, uh, that now non-taxpaying entities can can tap into this as well. And I know you're scratching your heads like, how can a non-taxpaying entity take a tax deduction? They don't pay taxes. But what they can do is they can allocate that tax deduction to um, the engineer or the architect or the building contractor, um, whoever they're working with that a for-profit entity that they're working with. And, and so it's it's part of the negotiation uh, uh, for the price of that project. They, that non-taxpaying entity says, hey, I'm going to get a, on this 100,000 100, square foot building, I'm going to get a, a tax deduction of $500,000. So I'm going to allocate that to you, building contractor. And so why don't you reduce the price of this project by X amount? It's really, again, a negotiating point. Let's talk about direct pay. Um, direct pay, this brand new thing. You know, all these tax credits, so wonderful except if you were a non-tax paying entity, if you were a city, county school, food shelf, the Red Cross, whatever it may be, a non-tax paying entity, you could not take advantage of that tax credit. And so the Inflation Reduction Act recognizes this and implements what they call direct pay. Uh, this is, these are, uh, will be for renewable energy projects as well as for electric vehicles. Um, so you can receive up to, uh, again, 30% minimum 
a direct payment from Uncle Sam for these projects uh, or 30% up uh, of the cost of the, of the qualifying vehicle. So if it's a vehicle, uh, there's a limit of $7,500 um, for your, uh, for like for your typical sedan uh, and a $40,000 limit for vehicles up uh, above that weight. So like uh, a bucket truck or a fire engine or um, something of that nature. Uh, so again, for the for the um, for re a renewable energy project, you want to put a solar on a solar array on your city hall. Uh, you can tap into the. It's a way for for non tax paying entities to tap into tax credits like like the investment tax credit, thirty percent and a minimum investment tax credit. IRA and the bipartisan infrastructure law, affectionately known as Uncle Ira and Uncle Bill. Uh, and some folks add in the, the CHIPS Act um, uh, that encourages domestic production of, of uh, electronic chips. So Uncle Ira, Uncle Bill, Uncle Chip, these are all brand new things in, in the last few years, and they all work together. Uh, bipartisan in, 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 um, infrastructure law passed in November 2021, 1.2 trillion, trillion, trillion dollars for highways and bridges and port investments and wastewater treatment plants and building out broadband, but also 7.5 billion to build out a national network of EV uh, charging uh, sites and $73 billion um, in power infrastructure and, and clean energy transmission. So you can't really have one without the other. As we head towards the, the tail end here, thanks for hanging in there. I, I think these are some of the key takeaways First of all, again, a lot of these investments targeted towards our low and moderate income residents. Uh, that investment tax credit um, set at 30% for a decade. And there's really predictable, that, that, that is predictable. It used to be what was called the solar roller coaster or the solar coaster where that tax credit was 30% then going down then Congress would bump it back up. And, and now it's 30% for at least a decade. That standalone batteries, um, how they can tap into the tax credit is a big deal. Uh, that REAP incentive, 50%, holy moly, for farmers, for small, medium-sized businesses in, in rural Minnesota, what a great advantage that is, a great incentive that is. The fact that you can sell these tax credits and then these, uh, then the implementation of direct pay or elective pay uh, for non-tax paying entities. All of these, I think, are game changers. These are some um, resources I found to be particularly helpful as I've dived into the Inflation Reduction Act, of course, I point people directly towards the last one on the list there. How could I not? The Clean Energy Resource Teams, we have, we have a ton of great information. We break it out by resident, business, um, and uh, try to make it as, as digestible as it possibly can be. So encourage folks to go there, um, as well as other great sites. I mentioned the Rewiring America's really helpful and and the department and the feds and they have they have good information uh online as well last but not least why we're here to get today again um thank you very much for considering becoming an ira ambassador and and helping get the word out i know we've already had something like 50 50 to 60 people 50 to 60 different groups um, 
uh, download our materials and are using our materials already. And that's fantastic. But boy, let's double that. Let's triple that. And uh, again, you can tap into those recorded presentations and make it easy for you with some scripts and handouts and slide decks and and then uh, and then sign up for our email updates as well. That's me. Contact me if you have any questions about this. Um, and I know we have Shaylin and Maggie on the line as well. Yeah, we're all here to help. Um, if you have any questions about the ambassador program or the IRA or anything in between, um, just give me a holler or shoot, shoot us an email. And, and we've got that handy dandy short um, uh, website listed there. That'll, that'll bring you right to where you need to go. Hey, Pete, Shailen or Maggie. Maybe. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Shailen. I'm the communications manager for certs. Um, and you have all asked some really fantastic questions in the chat. And I've been trying to um, share links and, and share resources. And honestly, all of the links that answer your questions, um, I've been pulling them directly from our guide to the Inflation Reduction Act, which you can get from that little short link on the screen. But there are a couple questions. Pete, do you mind if I if I um if I catch you on the spot? Go for it. <laughs> There's a couple that I, I wasn't quite sure about. So um one person asked, is the transferability of tax credits only available for commercial projects? Or is it also available for homeowners that want to go solar that do not have a tax liability? Not a hundred percent, but I think it's, I'm, I'd say I'm 95% confident that it's just for commercial. Um, and then the 179D, is that only about energy efficiency or does it also reward all electric slash zero carbon emissions? Um, efficiency. Okay. Last question. You're doing great, Pete. Um, <laughs> It's a re follow up question. So um, the I know that it's it's a competition, but this person asked. So the federal amounts are first come first served by the states. Yeah. And if that person is still on, um, feel free to clarify too. Like I, I as that person may, may be taking themselves off mute. Um, yeah, I think I, if I understand correctly, I think each state is given an allocation. Okay. Joe, are you still here? Joe, I see, I see you are muted. <laughs> there you are. I am unmuted now. Um, what's the question again? You had asked a follow-up question about REAP and you had said, so the federal amounts are first come first served by the states. Right. Uh, each each state. Uh, um, so I think I had I had answered incorrectly. I had said by applicant, but Pete by by a, applicant, right? Pete, you there's, said it, there's an allocation to each state. I think I think it. I I think each state gets an uh, an allocation, um, and then people apply. Uh, you know, sort of like that. sort of like the NEVI program, NEVI. Uh, that's by state. In other words, for charging stations and things like that. I think that's by state. So low could, population. There could be some similarities there. Yeah. So low you know population what? states get uh, a certain dollar amount, and the uh, higher population states get uh, a different amount. Joe, I will follow up with you. Um, I'll take your email from the registration and I'll um, reach out to, to a few folks and get you some specifics. I Is would love to be you? your ambas ambassador in Wisconsin. That's where I'm at. Ooh, <laughs> crossing borders. I love it. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Sure. Uh, we have three minutes left. Does anyone else have any, any question? We'll be sending a follow up to everyone um, with links to all of this and the recording. 
We really appreciate you all joining us today. This is great. And a huge shout out to Shaylin. As you can tell by the chat answers, Shaylin is a, a big part of the, the brains behind the operation. It's both Pete and Shaylin tag teaming this. So we are so appreciative to, to have both of them. Thanks, Maggie. It's mostly Pete, though. <laughs> I was going to say it's mo mainly Shaylin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if there's no other questions, you guys all get the gift of two minutes time. So thanks again for joining us. And if you have any questions, don't ever hesitate to reach out. We we respond to every email we get and we really love hearing the questions you have. It helps us um, do our work a little bit better. So info at cleanenergyresourceteams.org. You'll hear something back. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.